All right. Now we're doing free code camp, JavaScript algorithms and data structures, ES6, create strings using template literals. All right. So a, a new feature of ES6 is template literals. It is the template literal, I should say. So this is a special type of string that makes creating complex strings easier. So template literals allow us to create multi-line strings and to use string interpolation features to create strings, all right? Uh, so consider the code below. We've got const person equals this uh, object, which has a, pardon me, which has a uh, name property and also an age property right here. So when we do console, pardon me, when we do const greeting equals this thing right here, and you see this backtick character, it's not the same as a uh, quote. But we've got back to character, hello, comma, my name is, and then we've got this thing right here, which is called an embedded expression. And it says person.name, which is which is accessing person.name, which the value would be Zodiac Hasbro. And then it'll say, and then on a different line, we press enter here, on a different line, it says, I am, and another embedded expression, person.age, so 56 years old. And so when we do console.log greeting, it's gonna give us Hello, my name is Zodiac Hasbro. And then on another line, I am 56 years old, just like that. So let's go over this. So a lot of things are happening here. Firstly, the example uses backtick characters, okay? Like I said, backticks are these things. And it's the uh, character that's right above the tab key and to the left, the one, okay? And uh, for this, that and the backticks wrap the string. So secondly, we're going to notice that the string is multi-line, so it's two different lines, and both in the code, it's multi-line both in the code and in the output. And this saves inserting a backslash in within the strings. Also, this thing right here, this uh, embedded expression syntax used above is a placeholder. Basically, we won't have to use concatenation with the plus operator anymore. So to add variables to strings, we just drop the variable in a template string and wrap it with the uh, dollar sign and a couple of curly braces. Similarly, we can include other expressions in our string literal. For example, if we had like an a, a variable that was A and another variable that was B, we could add them together inside of, a, uh, in, inside of an embedded expression, right? And it's an embedded expression because it's an expression embedded inside the string, right? Uh, and that's just what it, let's go over here. Template literals JavaScript. And that's just what it says over here on the um, MDM web docs. I didn't just make that up. Uh, so we've got embedded expressions right here. That's what they're called. So let's come back over here. And uh, so now let's do this. We're going to use template literal syntax with backticks to create an array of list elements. So list item, strings. Each list elements text. Each list elements text should be one of the array elements from the failure property on the result object and have a, a class attribute with the value text warning. Okay, so we're gonna be looking at this result dot failure and it's gonna be something, any, it's gonna be all three of these outside of, inside of this array, right? So basically what it's gonna look like is, uh, let's, let me finish reading this. So the make list function should return the array of a list item string, of list item strings. So we're gonna use an iterator method, any kind of loop, to get the desired output shown below. So we'll have something like this. We'll have the uh, opening angle bracket list, pardon me, li class equals text warning, and then we'll have the closing angle bracket. And then in between these two angle brackets, we'll have no var or var on top or line break. So this one, this one, and this one, all in between the closing list item tag, right? Hopefully that makes sense. Oh, and all of this is also inside of an array. So to do that, we've already got this const failure items array created. So under this, we're going to make a for loop. So we'll say for let i equal zero while i is less than r because we're targeting whatever goes into the r, all right? r dot length will say i plus plus like that. So let's come over here and say, uh, what do we want to do? We want to push these 
inside of this, inside of this string, into each one of these uh, elements. Hopefully that makes sense, but let's do this. Let's say failure items, because it's this empty array, right? Dot push, dot push. And then what we're gonna do is have the back tick characters like this. And let's just take this right here, just to save us a little bit of uh, video time. How about that? Let's copy that, drop it in here. And instead of no var, what we're gonna put in here is the embedded expression. So let's say dollar sign, curly braces. And inside here, we're gonna say result, because we're gonna be accessing this. We'll, re we'll type result, result dot, failure all right so right now we're accessing this uh what is it this uh, uh what is the thing called property that has this uh what is that that has this array as the value and so now we're going to access it by saying i right here all right so it's result dot failure at index i. So first it'll be index zero, which will be no var, then index one, which will be var on top, then index two, which will be line break, right? So, and then we're going to return failure items, right? So we're going to return the array we just made. So let's come down here and say console, that's not how we do it, console.log, and we'll put failures list like that. And you see, it's uh, this, the failures list is the function call for this uh, function that we just made. And we put failures list, which is, huh? Oh, no, no. And then it's doing result.failure as the uh, make list. Is that what we're doing? Do we have to do, oh, let's not put result.failure. Let's just put R. R? R? I guess that works too. R at I? Yeah, that does work. Okay. Anyway, so we'll just do R at I. And you see it does, it works right, it works just like that. So it has the list item class. It has this thing just like that over here. So let's run the test. Looks good and submit it. All right. Now we're on to write concise object literal declarations using object property shorthand. And we'll see you next time.